floor is made of lava is usually a game that requires your imagination, but it wouldn't have to be if you had a giant furnace that could heat rock to over 1200 degrees C. Syracuse University has one of those, and ours got to check it out while some volcanology students from Colgate University ran small experiments like pouring red hot lava over a couple bags of gas station ice while measuring the temperature of the lava with special keep your distance thermocouple probes and an infrared camera. The project at Syracuse is run by art professor Robert Wazaki and geologist Jeffrey Carson, and it's part art, part science, and part public outreach. If you have a pulse, you'll probably get a kick out of experiencing an actual lava flow. And scientists relish the opportunity to run tightly controlled experiments with real lava, minus the extreme personal danger of working on an angry and unpredictable volcano. And besides, it's just really, really cool. If you want to see lava throw a fit, just quench it with water. In 1973, an eruption on the small Icelandic island of Heime illustrated the fact that we shouldn't forget lava is as dangerous as it is fun to look at. Much of the town on Heime was either consumed or crushed, and the lava flow threatened to close the mouth of the harbor, which was even worse news for an economy based on fishing. So they hosed the flow down with seawater, cooling and slowing it just enough to save the harbor. These students decided to simulate a wee Heime, albeit with a slightly higher hose-to-lava ratio than the Icelanders can pull off. You can see bubbles form in a few of these lava pores, and, and those form as water that gets into the lava, turns to vapor, and tries to get out. Because the surface of the lava is already cooler, there's a skin of thicker, stickier lava, and it traps the vapor and inflates like a little demonic balloon. Another group simulated the insulating effects of lava tubes, which can form in large flows as that outer skin of the flow solidifies. That allows the lava and the interior of the tube to flow much farther before being exposed to the air and cooling off. The role of the lava tube is being played here by a piece of steel pipe. The banana was a last minute addition, and a surprising amount of it survived. You can actually see some of it cooking inside of a large bubble. Everyone was wondering if maybe they should have soaked it in rum and added a little brown sugar first. I might normally want to throw in one of those don't try this awesome thing at home kids warnings, but this takes some pretty serious hardware that I doubt you have at home unless you're like Dr. Evil or run your own steel foundry. So it's pretty likely Syracuse will remain home to New York's only volcano.